After that, everything was a blur. As quickly as we could, we prepared for battle and marched to the Fushi Fushimi Magistrate's office. But this is so galling. Galling is a weird word. Night had fallen by the time we arrived at Kujo Beach. After leaving the Fushimi Magistrate's office, we made for the Aizu Manor. Upon arriving, we relayed our previous encounter and asked for new, new orders. The manor official we met with directed us to go to Kujo Beach, which we did. However, Nakakura seemed to tolerate no more of this. Huh? The man flinched and shivered, then fell silent. Kondo did his best to assume a professional air, but there was no hiding his massive grin. どうやらここのアイズハンの兵たちは主戦力じゃなくただの予備兵らしい。アイズハンの主だった兵たちは浜栗御門の方を守っているそうだ。They're so all we can do is wait. There was a chance that the call could come at night, so the men stayed awake, ready to act. I want to take the offer, but unfortunately the game won't let me. The break of dawn burned my eyes as I heard it. A cannon? Even during our lengthy march the day before, I'd never seen Hijikata mad. Maybe because of his position as commander, he was afraid to express himself when his temper flared up. But it looked as if he reached his limit. Normally, he left the yelling to Nagakura and stayed patient when speaking with any with army officials. This time, however, he finally had enough. <laughs> Ijikata was in no mood for excuses. Without even waiting for a response, Hijikata spun around and stalked off fuming. Where are we going? I didn't dare raise my voice above a whisper, but I asked Saito, who was walking near me. Hamaguri Gate? You mean where Aizu's main force is protecting, right? Hamaguri the question was, where would I go? We're going to Mount Tenno. Mm. There was no question I would go with Hijikata and chase after Ronin heading for Mount Tenno. Despite Fushimi being quite a distance away, soldiers moved at a rapid pace. It was hard for me to keep up, but I was beginning to run short of breath when I saw... someone. He was standing in front of us, shadows obscuring his face and clothes, cloaked in a strange aura. It's the bitch. The bitch. The bitch. The legend. <laughs> Ishikata seemed to sense it too, and he motioned for the men to halt. 
and Shinsukumi stopped save for one man who was either too excited or too foolish to heed the commander. I saw a momentary flash of steel as the man yelped. The man just laid there, unresponsive. I could see thick red blood already beginning to pull around him. Taken aback by f first by the sudden attack, the men all turned now to glare at the stranger. They were already on edge, but the man's words only made the men more agitated. I'd heard from the men that they had their reasons for wearing their uniforms. They wanted desperately to pay the strange man back for his taunts for attacking their brother. But they knew now was no time for revenge. Now all I can hear is Kaiba. Blue eyes dragon. Koko de Hikikaese, Samona Kuba, Imano Mono no Yoni, Chihedo, Haiti, Taore Kotoninaru. As he spoke, I felt the air begin to thicken with the rage of the Shinsengumi. Omaenga Ikedaya de Soju, Taushta Yatsuka. Taishta Sumo de Rashina. Zuiven to Yasui Chuhatu Surujanuka. Ishikata's smile was anything but warm. He laughed at the sight of the man he just slain. Is it what? He laughed like it. He, okay. he, he left with the body he slain. That's bleeding he on left. the ground. Oh, like. Oh, my God. 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 Nagakura doesn't mind every time that Shoji gets insulted. <laughs> I like his way of thinking. No, like. <laughs> <laughs> I heard the soft hiss of Nagakura's sword sliding from its scabbard. At his feet lay the man who'd been attacked, his face now an odd pale color. I wept for his spirit. <laughs> キサマラが武士の誇りも知らず手柄を得ることしか頭にない幕府の犬だから敗北を知り戦場を去った連中を何のために追い立てようというのだ腹を切る時間と場所を求め天王山を目指した長州侍の誇りを何故に理解できぬ
How can someone keep their pride they expect someone else to fight for? He did not sound amused. Now that's not really what I meant, but under that crimson glare, my voice trailed off. The man spoke through clenched teeth, and the knuckles of his sword hand turned white. おのずから腹を切る名誉なんぞ。御所に弓引いた逆賊には不要のもんだろう。Hichikata's own concepts of pride and honor was not something he could easily compromise. No matter how long he and the strangers spoke, I also knew that they would never see eye to eye. Hichikata drew his sword from its scabbard and I saw Nagakura drop into a fighting stance. Hichikata's eyes narrowed and after muttering something angry under his breath, Nagakura stepped back and put his blade back in its sheath. Be お前も覚悟はできてるんだろうな。俺たちの仲間を切り殺した。その覚悟。口だけは達者らしい。まさか俺を殺せるとでも思っているのか。In an instant, their swords met and the clang of metal reverberated through the mid-afternoon air. They sprang apart. Eyes fixed on one another, and I saw Hijikata's hand tighten on his sword. The commander's swordsmanship seemed without a true rival, but this man had defeated Okita. I saw Nagakura reach for his own sword. He was, he was to leap into the fight as well, probably hoping to help Hijikata gain the upper hand. When I saw him about to pounce, I couldn't help but scream. Oh look, an option in white! Look. We're gonna fight as well. Please, can we go through on it this time? I want this girl to have a backbone, at least a little bit more. Oh jeez. Uh, okay. I'll fight too! There was only one of them, and if Nagakura and I stood with Hijikata, we'd have a pronounced advantage. So, I drew my kodachi. Yoga it there! I heard the repeated scrape of metal moving as Nagakura and the men behind us all drew their swords to join the commander. His words stopped us in our tracks. Our detachment had been given the assignment of ta tracking down the rebels who fled to Mount Tenno. We had no time to waste, but even so, we could hardly just leave Hijikata behind. With Hijikata in striking distance, the swordsman didn't dare move towards us. I was torn. Hijikata was an amazing swordman, but the stranger was... As he spoke, Nagakura slid his sword back into the scabbard with ease and gestured to the men. But... 
I was still trying to think it through when Nagakuro grabbed my hand. His words calmed me a little. Right! Without looking back, I kept running as if Nagakuro was dragging me. I, I feel like he would actually drag you, though. Oh my... Nagakuro's fucking strong. <laughs> Jeez. It's almost night time. I was waiting at the base of Mount Tenno. Nagakura led some men further up looking for the Chosu rebels, but a few were left at the bottom in case any other Chosu forces returned. I stayed with them. <laughs> eh. Where do noises come from? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Shakes in the up. Oh my god. <laughs> Is he gonna join us, by the way? I don't think so. Knowing him, he's probably just doing the the dishes for, for all his neighbors. <laughs> did he come back? Did he ever come back? No, he never did. Oh lord. I, I actually sent him a message. And I told him, hey, dude, what the fuck are you doing? Did you went to do your neighbor's dishes? And he was like, oh, shit, I forgot to get back. What? And I was like, you fucking idiot. <laughs> oh, and yeah, God. that happened. You want to ask him <laughs> since he's clearly sending you shit? <laughs> Let's see. I know, but is Hichikata safe? He must be. No sooner were the words out of my mouth than a shadow appeared in the dirt road in front of me. Uh, the shadow stepped towards us and into the light. Hichikata-san! I felt tears spring to my eyes and shoved them away with the back of my hand. Shimada was right. Hijikara-san was without a scratch, but even so, his expression was dark. Oh. Well, <laughs> but if he's part of the Satsuma domain, didn't they help the Aizu drive off the Chosu? Why did Kazuma try to stop the Shinsengumi? I frowned. Something wasn't right. Does that mean he disobeyed orders? Kazuma, I mean. <laughs> Maybe it's because he's powerful enough to hold off men like Okita and Hijikata, but there's something else to him that perplexed me. When Hijikata spoke next, his voice was bitter. Before Hijikata could continue, we heard the sound of men approaching and Nagakura appeared with the bulk of our detachment trailer behind him. Nagakura stopped for a split second when he saw Na Hijikata, and then he creeped into a sly grin. My heart fell as he, as he explained. I wasn't sad that they'd killed themselves or that the Shinsengumi hadn't been able to arrest them. Only that more lives had been lost.
That's what Nagakura says, but I'm not so sure. I thought about how I felt about Nagakura's words. And, uh, uh, I'm not sure I agree, apparently. Oh my god. Do you really think so? If they didn't die here, maybe they could have survived and eventually done something good with their lives. Nagakura gave me a puzzled look. I think he was taken aback by the ambitiousness of my phrase. I even surprised myself a little. From my experience with the Shinsengumi, I could see why Nagakura's perspective made sense. As the daughter of a doctor, though, seeing people close to the brink of death and treating illnesses and injuries, I couldn't see suicide as an option. To take your own life, though? There's so much more to life than fighting, don't you think? Nagakura frowned slightly at my suggestion, then sighed as he continued. His expression shifted quickly into a light-hearted smile, and he scratched his head. Thank you. He was just talking about how honorable it seems for the Chosu to commit an honorable suicide. It seemed, though, he empathized with me. I think he agreed because he understood my point. Even if it was all a display to make me feel better, it worked. I appreciated his gesture. So we returned to Mount Tano to meet back with the others. On the way back, Hijikata and the men began plotting their next move. It looked like there was still plenty for the Shinsengumi to do in Kyoto. And now a long ass explanation! Mm. 